Okay. Uh, oh, that's loud. Do I turn it down? No. I mean, Can you all hear it? Mean, you hear me okay? I, I, usually, I usually tend to talk too loud anyway. Yeah. So having a mic just really amplifies my boldness. Uh, anyway, that's funny. Somebody talked to me this morning and said, God, you're wearing all black and white. You look like we're a nun. I brought a ruler. Needless to say, I'm a St. Pat's Shamrock, a sister of the Cherry Leavenworth. Brought me up as I was young, and it kind of fits in the topic of today. So. Uh, today's topic is going to be called the Butte Connection. So, I know a lot of the folks that are in here. How, how many aren't from Butte? Can you raise your hand? Ooh, that's a lot. Okay. Uh, for a lot of those that are kind of new to Butte or haven't been here for a while, this will probably be a real funny interpretation of what's going on. <laughs> those that have been here, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> You're part of this story. Whether you believe it or not, those folks from Butte, this is really ingrained in who you are. So, uh, to get where we're at, uh, this is the archives. I uh, helped move in here and. and wait. Where, where's the feedback? I have no idea. Oh, probably because you're under the speaker. Move to your left. Move, move, uh, anyway, move to your left. Stay behind. Move to your left. Anyway, this is the archives. <laughs> Uh, we got moved in here in 2010 when this, this uh, building was created and added on to the fire department. Uh, these three panels that are in the front here, the granite sections that are there, they contain these really significant quotes about you. The one that I find particularly interesting that I really like that really pertains to what we're talking about today is this one that Mary Hagan in Ireland told her daughter Lizzie on her departure from Ireland to Butte. She said, now don't forget, Lizzie, when you get to the new world, don't stop in America. <laughs> Go straight to Butte, Montana. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the whole import of what this is all about. These folks in Ireland knew where they were coming. They knew they were sending their teenage kids what to do. So they knew they were safe. But not just go to America, you gotta go to Butte. So that, to me, that's really significant. So, from there, welcome to Butte. Uh, for those that look at this scene, the first thing they think of is where is it taken from? Museum. Perfect. BM. Two things: Big Butte, the Big M. You know, if you ask anybody at Butte, where was it? Big Butte, the Big M. Both answers are right, but they're both different, right? Butte's really exceptional. We always have a lot of answers for different things, but they can always be right. <laughs> and they're both they're both right, but uh, which one's the writer one? Well, for you, we'll find out. So, I'm a history guy, so I like to start out with a little bit of history. Three copper kings from Butte, Marcus Daly, William Andrews Clark, and I guess his highest big miners came to Butte. May help make Butte. Made a lot of money. But in order to do that, they had to bring folks to mine here. So they brought all these miners in from Eastern Europe, Finland, Germany, Ireland, England, all over the world. They all came to you. They all came to mine. And they all became part of this giant melting pot that would be the Butte community. So with that in mind, all these folks came here and they all spoke different languages. They all had different cultures. They all had different religions. They all had to live together. They all had to work together. So going underground, you might have an Italian working with an Irish guy. You might have a Finn working with a German. But underground, they had to be partners. It was life and death. Things, were, things could be really bad. So if you couldn't depend on your partner, you, know, you might not make it out of the underground. So that was really important. So they developed these relationships. And they, they lived in neighborhoods that, where they shared the same values. They shared the same religion, they shared the same language, shared the same culture, shared the same food, stayed in the same area, had their own churches, had their own neighborhoods, had their own fraternal organizations, had all that kind of stuff together in their own groups, in their own neighborhoods. The Irish had one, the Finlanders had one, the Croatians had one. They all intermingled, but at the end of the day, they went home to where they, where they uh, were comfortable and felt at ease. 
So, I always ask when folks come to Butte, you know, why, why did you come to Butte? You came to Butte because our shopping is so terrific. You know, our scenery is really nice. And uh, it was in the days when we hardly had, ever had any trees here at all. Uh, you know, in the air, you know, we have all that dust coming from the pit. You know, Lake Berkeley, I mean, you can't be Lake Berkeley, right? Yeah. And we certainly know this last winter, we had our warm weather and this <laughs> high altitude. Everybody loves that, right? So that's why they come here, or is it just because this is where you found the job? Uh, I don't know. We seem to like all those things, but other people, we know that's not what draws people here. We know that. So, you people are really proud. They're proud of the heritage, and they're proud of their community. It's not just a town, it's a community. And there's a big difference. The people are really loyal, the word is their bond. People are really friendly and welcoming. People are very helpful. You know, they help build each other's houses with some help from the company. Uh, you people are very dependable. And, and do people overcome adversity, more so than anywhere? You and Anaconda are really similar in that respect. When mining got bad, and mining closed down, and the price of copper dropped, and the pit closed, and all those things like that, Butte should have been a ghost town. Everybody should have left. Many, many times. You know, when the silver, when the gold played out years ago, when the silver played out, when the copper went dead, and the pits closed, any other town would probably die. Butte just keeps on chugging. Butte will always keep on chugging. And it's not because of all the, the Lake Berkeley and all our fun stuff around here. It, it, it's something else. You know, few people enjoy life, and they fight for their values. But some people think you people are really nosy. <laughs> and it's really funny, but I, I've had people tell me that they're way too nosy. And I don't think it's being nosy at all. I think it's what you, I call the good connection. And I'm going to explain this to you, and you're going to be part of this because you're part of this Butte Connection, whether you realize it or not. And I realized this when I, uh, my boys live in Seattle, and my niece lives in Los Angeles. She's a detective for the LA police. And when I went to visit, or when I go to visit, any of them, uh, we tend to, you know, we walk downtown and go to eat and see these people around town. And, we walk around, and I start looking at all these people in the crowd. And my boys say, quit looking at people. <laughs> and I say, why? <laughs> Don't be looking at me, it's none of your business. I say, I might, I might see something I know. <laughs> no, there's a million people here, and they're not from you. You're not going to run into anybody, you know. Quit looking at them and don't look in their eye. Don't do that. Move, move to them. your left, oh, closer okay. to the skirt. That, that's kind of crazy. So it, was, it kind of was the basis of the start of me figuring out why these people that move from Butte do this stuff when in Butte, this is what we do all the time. If we walk around in Butte, we look at everybody. We know who's not from here. Now we look at them and they look away and they don't nod their head. He's not from here. I, I know he's not from here. So, what do you do? You go over and ask him. What are you doing here? <laughs> What's going on? When did you get it? When did you leave it? Oh, so, that's the star of the view connection. So, when I was, when I was young, <laughs> I thought Butte was the center of the universe. Now, my parents taught me that, you know, this is kind of where everything evolves from. You know, you look at religion, you know, everybody in Butte was either Catholic or something else. They all had a religious background. Went to church every Sunday, and we dressed up, and went to church. So that, that was a common thing. I always thought the Pope was going to be from Butte. <laughs> I, that was really, you know, at least he should come from Montana. You know? And then we never an Irishman. That was really crazy. I could never figure that part out. But still, everything revolved around that. So did politics. Butte and politics are kind of synonymous. You know, Butte ran the state, right? Pretty obvious. And the Conda Company. And the Conda Company had their headquarters in Butte. Not somewhere else. Their headquarters were here. Montana Power Company. Power for the state. <coughs> their offices and headquarters were in Butte. Everything is revolving around Butte, right? That's what I thought when I was little. 
And of course, the economy revolved around copper, price of copper, very important. Yeah. In athletics, we want everything. We want state championships all the time. That's going to be real tough. <laughs> we, we want everything. So for me, <clears throat> everything revolved around you. We went when, when our family would go somewhere, we'd always run into people in Seattle or Las Vegas or Salt Lake or something. We'd run into all these Butte people. Oh, yeah, we lived in Butte. We moved away. Yeah. We're making this other place better. We're making it more like Butte. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I like it. Yeah, that's what we're doing. So anyway, major influences in Butte for those growing up. You all remember, if I said the company, Butte folks would say, oh, ACM, yeah, we know the company. The company, ACM, and the Conley Company. Three answers. Pretty good. They're all right. Same way with the power. You all like the power, right? Everybody knows the power. Northwestern Energy now, but. Yeah, how many of us oh, still call, call it the power? power? What's that? How many of us still call it the power, though? The Butte folks call it the That's power. The power. <laughs> the Butte folks call that. Yeah. And the Conley ACM. Yeah. That's, that's the sixth floor. Yeah. yeah. So. Anyway, the family roots is also a major influence for you. All these Italians from Meaderville, the Irish from Dublin Gulch, Yugoslavians from McLean, the French on the east side, English in Centerville, and the Scandinavians over in Pintown. You talk to any Butte folks, that's where they connect them to. You hear somebody's name, you know, you hear a Einer Kivala, Finland, east side, Pintown. You know all. So you see their name, you hear their name, you know where they came from because that's where they grew up. So those family roots were really important. Also, again, like we were talking about the religion. I was trying to pick another church other than the Catholic ones, St. Pat's and the MAC, the IC, the Immaculate Conception, they all work. Uh, I didn't know what other denominational church would fit in there, and I couldn't pick several, so I just picked those two because those are the ones I went to when I was little. And, of course, Last week, whoops, the schools, Butte High, Boy Central, and Girl Central. Butte Central now, but it used to be separate. Boys and girls, separate schools, and then Butte High. So those were the major influences. So we're talking about politics and how, about, how Butte affects that. You know, to me, when I was little, politics was really big. Mike Mansfield, I met Mike Mansfield. They're all clicker here all the time. There you go. Mike Mansfield, Senate Majority Leader, yeah. National Senator. He came to do it all the time. I met him. I shook his hand many times when I was little. He was a friend of my dad's. Arnold Olson was a congressman, another guy from Butte. Shook his hand many times. My uncle worked for him. Real big influence. They're from Butte. Pretty good. Judy Martz. Female governor, first female governor, and the woman to be the governor from Butte. Use number one, right? You like that. Pat Williams, a one time, only one congressman from Montana, he's the guy. He's from Butte. We all like that, right? Use number one. Yeah, so that, that's how those things kind of work. So, now we get to the part that I really like. Everybody knows this park in Maine, right? Butte? Look at the pickpocket at the bottom of the picture. A guy is picking another man's pocket. Really? Uh, oh my God! Huh, how about that? I didn't know that. That's pretty good. I didn't hear that. Maybe they were just really close friends. I don't know. But anyway, picture this. This, this, this is a. Uh, oh, God. You keep hitting the button. I'm going to use my other clicker. Do you want me to plug your other clicker in? No, I got it in my pocket. I'll just have to try and remember. Okay. Anyway, you're, you remember going over, uh, over town. <laughs> this is uh, part of Maine. Everybody knows it's Skag. So this is in the, in the 50s. So this picture was taken in the 50s. And I remember uptown Butte being bustling like that all the time. So I remember going over town with my folks. You probably all remember that too. I hated it. It took forever. If you're ready to go get a soda or go get a toy or something, 
And you were with your mom or dad walking across Park Street? It took forever. <laughs> We'd run into somebody that they'd know, and you'd stop, and they'd talk. They'd introduce you to them, you'd have to shake their hand, you'd have to remember who they were, and then they'd say, oh, this is your aunt's sister, or this is your grandma's brother. Remember, remember that. This is your family, you know. Or these are, these are our neighbor's friends, you know, you know that. We've been to their house before, we went and had chicken, you know. I don't know. But all these, all these relationships that happen, you learn this as you go along town. So you walk across town, you see these people, you get away from them and you go 15, 20 feet, you stop again. And you do the same thing again, over and over. It just took forever. So I hated that going over town because it's crazy. But you learned, as you were little, you learned the art of introductions. As you got older and you went to school, you could introduce your friends to other friends because you know how to do it because you learned it when you were little. You knew how to shake hands. You always gave a good, hearty handshake. Never a dead fish. Never get the dead fish. <laughs> You'd almost punch somebody if they give you the dead fish. <laughs> so you, you remember names and faces. You learn the art of conversation. You learn how to break the ice with somebody. You learn and you know how to do that. Because you learned that when you were little. So you know when to be quiet. Your folks told you when to be quiet. And they knew when you had to talk. When you had to respond and talk to these folks that they met all the time. So you learn how to be a gentleman and you learn how to be a lady from all these times you went over town with your family. But it took forever. So, you brought these things home, you know, when your friends come to your visit your house, or uh, when you come home from school, your folks want to know what you did, what was happening in school, things are going on. So you tell the stories about what happened, and you relate all these beautiful things that you did when you came home. You know, they probably do that all over the world. And then you, you do this all the time. It's part of growing up, and it's almost like you have to do this every day. So when you ask to go to a friend's house, or if you're going to go somewhere, your folks always ask you questions, right? So they're kind of being nosy too, right? <laughs> so they kind of start that. So when you go out at night as you get older, and you don't want to give the right answers, <laughs> those questions are still there. And the same way when you start to date, things like that, you start getting older, the questions still persist. So I always call that when I was young, I always call that the interrogation. <laughs> it was just kind of crazy, but it, it's what you did in you. And that's what happened, what you did you connected all these invisible dots. So your folks did this, and now you do it, and now your kids do it. <laughs> you connect all these dots. Who are they? Who are their folks? Who are their folks? Yeah. What are you going to be doing? What's going on? What's the event? Yeah. When is it going to be? When are you coming home? Where is it at? Why are you going? It all connects on how it is. If everything checks out and you're, all the answers are right, you check everything right, you get the check mark, you made it work. Everything is kosher, everything's good. So, you are learning the view connection. So, this stuff just continues, you know. It continues as you get older, and as you grow up, you just keep it going. You realize what's going on, everything's familiar. Even when you go out of town, again, like I said, you see these other people and you say, I should know somebody here. No, no, you don't get people, you're not gonna know anybody. But that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna look, and you're gonna look people in the eye. And they're gonna not stare at you. They're gonna think you're really weird. But that is what happens. So we do that, we do that all over. But you know, once we did run into somebody, and you did meet somebody from out of town that was from you somewhere else, it was like a reunion. You know, like, oh, God, from the skies. Somebody that I know here. And then you start that conversation like you do on Park Street. Everybody's talking, and everybody else is waiting for you to finish because you're dragging out the time. So that's, that's how things go with that. So tell me I'm wrong. Okay? You do this through grade school, high school, you do it on the job. You get a new job, new guy comes to work, you ask him all kinds of questions, right? Yeah. Or they ask you a question, where do I go, where's the fun, what do I do? And you're going to give them a whole barrage of stuff to do in Butte where it's cool and interesting, right? Yeah. Conversations among friends, it happens all the time in Butte. 
You say, oh, I met this guy the other day, and they say, oh, I know him. His wife's my brother's cousin. We used to work together down the pit. You know? uh, yeah. Now I know. I get it. Yeah, I get it. So it's not always just gossip. It's connecting the dots. You know, you want to know how they're connected in one And once you get that in your head, you just connect more things. It makes more things interesting. But once you get that connection with someone else, especially someone from elsewhere, you get to be their friend. So all of a sudden, if you, it, it's like it's like in math, you know, that I forget the, the principle. A equals B equals C. If A equals B, then and B equals C, then A equals C. Association? I forget. Mm -hmm. It's property, math property. But anyway, if you have a friend and that friend has a friend, then you can be a friend of that friend because of this. you've got a mutual friend in between. <laughs> and it works. Am I, am I right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you know, you may hear saying, you know, <laughs> you know, we do it all the time. <laughs> always. So, we're always tying people and things together. And we do it for a connection. And you have to laugh all you want, but you do it all the time. So anyway, uh, <laughs> when you get that far, everything's pretty funny. Everybody's pretty happy when you get that far. So, <clears throat> feud pride runs really deep at all levels. Feud folks usually speak first, and usually nod hello. And if you walk anywhere, they'll look you in the eye, and if they know you, they'll talk. If they don't know you, they'll either nod or say hello, or say, how's she going, or something. <clears throat> you folks nod and shake hands. You know, guys, they're pretty proud of their handshake. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's a pretty neat thing, I think. I learned it growing up. You know, another thing about Butte, everybody says, oh, Butte's a bad place. If you go there, you can get beat up. <laughs> you know, that's the furthest thing from the truth ever. But if you come to Butte, and you decide to climb on the awning up at the M&M &M and take a leak into the crowd on St. Patrick's Day, you're going to get beat up. <laughs> you ask for trouble. If you say anything bad about somebody from you, you're going to get beat up. <laughs> it's really silly to think any other way. I mean, that's, you come here and you ask for that, you're going to get it. <laughs> so is you tough in that respect? Yeah, every time. But if you come here and want to have fun, you can have fun. Just don't be a jerk. Really, really, really easy. So. Okay. Butte's personality. Mm. This interaction, you know, it, cre it creates our, our hospitality. Non-locals think it's intrusive because we ask too many questions. They really, they really think we're nosy. And we're not nosy at all. We just, we just want to know and we want to connect. It's re really, really easy. If you know when you're walking around town, you see somebody and you look at them and they won't look at you, you know they're not from here. <laughs> they usually won't talk to anybody either. If you come up and say, hey, how are you doing? They'll walk right by. Ah, oh, they're pretty rude. <laughs> don't understand them yet. And generally, if you speak to these people afterwards and you do get a conversation going, and you talk to them and say, well, you know, your neighbors come, you know, they come here, you know? I don't know, I don't know my neighbors. You live in Missoula and you don't know your neighbors? No, they stay in their place, I stay in mine, they don't bother anybody, they don't bother me. So you kind of, your circle of friends is pretty small, I'm guessing. <laughs> so I've always found in the last few years that people either really, really like Butte or they really, really hate it. <laughs> so if they like it, eh, come on back. If you don't like it, we didn't want you here anyway. <laughs> That's, that's my view. Again, like I, like I said from the beginning, this is my perspective. This is my observance of what I think Butte is and why Butte is what it is. You know, somebody else might have a total idea, a different idea. But I think for most Butte folks, this is it. Yeah. So, other people from other places seem to think we talk funny. I think that's rather silly. But I think they're right. You know, again, like I said, you folks are from, we stick up for our town, we sometimes dish it out. We like to dish it out. I'd like to dish it out a lot. <laughs> but we can take it, you know. If somebody says the same to me, I, I, I can take it just as well. Uh, but it's okay if we make fun of ourselves or our friends, because we're friends. 
But we don't like it if someone else does. If someone from elsewhere makes fun of us or I don't, those are fake words. And, and that, that can be a problem. So, but we do have a good sense of humor. Generally, I found you folks pretty, 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 you have a pretty good sense of humor, pretty funny. Look at this. Yeah. You versus everybody. <laughs> Who the hell else is going to do that? <laughs> you versus everybody. The world. Now, we're the center of the universe. Shit, we'll take all of you on. <laughs> yeah. Butte tough. Why would you say butte tough? You know, you're going to ask for a fight? Yeah. No wonder these people think that we want to fight all the time. Yeah. But if you ask butte people, what's butte tough? Butte tough is standing up for your own and standing up for your convictions and standing up for your community. That's butte tough. When people have trouble and people have problems, we help each other. That's being butte tough. Yeah, it's not about beating somebody up. Well, you beat up if they ask for it. Yeah. You know, one of my favorites, Butte. The city your mom warned you about. That's a girl's sweatshirt. I wonder where that accepts some tough girl from Butte. I think it's awesome. That'd be great. If I had daughters, I'd get it from all, both my daughters. If I had them. Yeah. Making fun of your town. Yeah. Berkeley Pitt swim team. Now who can be proud and wear that? That'd be great. My favorites. Helsinki Yacht Club. Next to the Berkeley Pit. Largest toxic body of water in the United States. We turn into a yacht club. <laughs> Who's got a sense of humor here? I think it's great. So, if I said the you folks in the room, the flats, the hill, the company, the sixth floor, the power, scabs, the pit, the gardens, the big M, the dump, the bus, the Mac, the IC, Immaculate Conception, the other Mac, mm -hmm. the can, the clink, the slammer, 14 soft, the D, the cav, or the comedy in the city. You folks know what all of those are. They're not exaggerated. That's what people call them. That's what it is. <laughs> are you from Butte, Teresa? <laughs> 14 South Wyoming. Did that ring a bell? Probably not. 14 South Wyoming was a brothel. Right up from the high school. Across from the Dumas. And the Empire. And the Missoula. And the Windsor. And the Victoria. Oh. Anyway. Mining terms. This is a cute thing, right? Muck. Everybody knows what muck is, right? You pick up that muck? Yeah, we don't Pick it up, gotta have a muck stick. Shovel. Shovel and muck. Diggers. They put their diggers on, right? Clothes. Work clothes. Berm. Pile of dirt. Dugan. Everybody, everybody you know what Dugan is. Dugan mortuary. Now, Dugan was a rock overhanging a mine. You didn't take him down so they'd fall on you and you'd end up at Dugan's. <laughs> Dugan, yeah. Dugan, really important. Grave, graveyard. It's really funny because when I was going to school elsewhere, people were, everywhere else they call it night shift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we work night shift. I said, no, you work in graveyard. No, graveyard's a cemetery. No, graveyard is night shift. So for me, that was kind of strange. Why'd they call it night shift? Night shift would be in the afternoon. Yeah. I don't know. Cage, dog, widow, widow maker, skip, raise, stove, drift. Level, manly, nipper, they're all pretty common terms in mining town, right? Few folks all know. Right? What's a gob? Yeah, what's a gob? A gob is a big pile of muck. Oh, you take all the gob and you put the gob in a pile, that's all the waste product. You don't haul it to the surface because you don't make any money. So you put all the gob back in the back of the mine and stove is empty. Yeah, we do kind of talk funny. You're gonna love this one. Roof, roof. Got like a dog, right? Roof, roof. Everybody has a roof. Other people call it roof. That sounds more like a dog to me. 
Does everybody know the silver ball crick, right? <laughs> Might be a lot of crick in their neck. We got a crick that runs through hell. 100. Maybe we can count it, right? 100, 200, 300, 400. Y'all know that, right? Bag. Bag. Man, oh. <laughs> that's for my niece. Yeah. There's bag and there's bag. You got the right bag. I make fun of my ah, own bag. children. It's a bag. Per near. Everybody knows per near, right? Pretty close. Per near. Per near. Gotcha. Everybody says gotcha. Exactly. That's exactly. exactly what you mean, right? You know, but we have foreign languages here, you know, we do some of this French stuff, you know, like. We call it envelope, you know, the nuns used to call it envelope. I didn't do French very good. So. This, this is one of my favorite, Buffett. <laughs> call it the fade, right? Well, I remember Eddie's Buffett on Wyoming Street. <laughs> Everybody know Eddie's Buffett? Between Broadway and Granite, B U F F E P, Eddie's Buffett. Yeah. Used to serve kids underage there. We all know Eddie. So I thought that was kind of funny. Povetitsa. So, Nam Khan did be. Povetitsa. Or elsewhere, they all have Povetitsa. No, Povetitsa. Kind of like Kavasic and Kovasic. Ah! And don't, you're from Nam Khan. Yeah. Yeah, we know that one. Jim. Jim. What? It's not Povetitsa. A pizza, yeah, kind of like steady. For <laughs> <laughs> the, the Italians in here, they shortcut that a little bit. So some of these are kind of funny, you know. No cuts in line all the time. People just people still say that, no cuts. I've seen that in line here in Butte. No cuts. Yeah. Cobbs. I asked some of the younger gals here, they didn't know what Cobbs was. You guys know what Cobbs is? Yes. So if you got a candy bar when you were little? Your kids next to you said, Cobbs, and he was the first one. He got to dig a big chunk of your candy bar. Yeah. Only if you were first. Huh. That was Cobbs, yeah. Pretty common. I got to go. <laughs> now don't tell me you never heard that before. Yeah, I got to go. So he says to me, Grant, <laughs> my mother taught English. He was an English teacher. Oh, ain't was never a word you just couldn't say. And so he says to me, didn't fit very good either. <laughs> you know, and we talked about that earlier, you know? Everybody says, you know, right? You know, right? Yeah. Back in the day. Anybody say back in the day? Some of us younger guys say in the olden days. <laughs> in the olden days, but the older guys say back in the day. Yeah. Them's the ones. <laughs> Them's the ones that did it. Them's the ones. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, then you get to the end of the day and it's all like, here's a goal. You know, have a drink and have a toast. Here's a goal. Or tap or light. And my favorite that a lot of my friends say, God love you. <laughs> all the little ladies in town always say, God love you. I think it's good. that religious pants that we got in there. These are a little different, but some might know. Uh, my brother was a fireman, so through the roof was a biggie for me. You know, through, through the roof was a fire. And if it was through the roof, it was a big one. Uh, Irish wake, everybody here knows an Irish wake was. In the olden days, you used to take the casket and stack it up against the wall. You know? if, it, if it was laying horizontal, sometimes it took up too much space. And they were having a party, so they stack it up against the wall. Oh, yeah. Never went to one, but I heard a lot about it. Speaking of an Irish quake, you had to put him in the marble orchard when you're done, right? Oh, to the cemetery, right? <laughs> and here's some terms. It, 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 these are good terms for people who work, you know. The guy that worked with the cable in the mine was a rope man. The guy that worked with plumbing and stuff was a pipe fitter. The guy that was a welder or a fabricator was a boiler maker. And then, of course, you always have a wood butcher, which, which is a carpenter. And you have a hose jockey, which was a fireman. So, you know, you folks, they, they know all these, they get it. Yeah, pretty easy to get. Not one of my favorites. <laughs> I'm kind of fond of anaconda. That's <laughs> really, a lot of you people call it anaconda. I'm like, how can that be? They're our neighbors. You shouldn't call it anaconda. <laughs> but a lot of them do. Kind of like a lunaman. Yeah. They probably me crazy to it. Yeah. Uh, you folks understand. Yeah. 
Who's Hashi Nolani? Everybody knows that, right? You know what that means. Yeah. Who's that? Kako <laughs> CT. Yeah. I'd grown up when I was little, I'd walk over town with my dad, and all these old guys would say to my dad, Kako CT. My dad would say, No, bro. And they'd say, what, what, are you, what are you doing? He said, It's Yugoslavia. How are you doing? Oh, okay. Good. Ah, very good. <coughs> Learning these different languages when I'm a little kid. Yeah. No, no idea. Got any change for a buck? <laughs> you betcha! Yeah, uh, when's a party? <laughs> Where'd you go? <laughs> Where is that? Coaches or pissers? <laughs> Name of bars here in town. Pretty good. Yeah, uh, always good. Yeah. Gazintas. Everybody knows their gazintas, right? It goes into this and goes into that. Three goes into six. Six goes into eight. <laughs> you know your presenters. It's kind of like math for some people. Am I out of time? So, no, I was just saying, now, so my dad grew up in Helena. That's so okay. he taught me that a gazenta <laughs> is the thing that you put into the light bulb if you need to plug something in there and change it into an eye socket. It's a gazenta. <laughs> <laughs> he was an engineer, though. <laughs> no, I figured. My boys are engineers. Yeah. 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 So that's what it they is. They didn't get it either. That's what it is. <laughs> okay. Ain't you got no learning, kid? I don't know how many times I learned that growing up. Yeah. And one of my favorites, Helen Patterson. Gicha? No. Not for it. That's my favorite. People do, do, do that all the time, I, and I had people say, what did you just say? I said, did you eat yet? What does that mean? I said, did you eat yet? Why didn't you say that? I said, I did. And what's funny is, they knew what you were saying. Yeah, because we speak the same language. It's really good. So, familiarity can create some friendships, right? You know, being familiar, being close, creates a lot of friendships. So in Butte, you know, for food and family, got chunky and bone stature, peanuts, dosa, peachy and donkey patrice, yonk and rooster patrice, moose and Big Eye Patrice, Gaffer Bones, Japes, and Chooks Kassoon, Monk Samansky, Fawns Hanley, Jug Cronley, Uncle Tanoose Tucson, Fish Lions, Crow Walsh, Peddler Leathers, Hooker Joe Nils, Traits, Traits, Wings Connors, Stinky Garrett, Slide Jim Sullivan, Dusty Dan Sullivan, Oki O'Connor, Shannon Crowley, Shadow Thompson, Hood Gibson, Blondie Patrick, Butter Driscoll, Dodo Patrice, Snooky Else, Moon LaBresh, Doc Harrington, Evil Knievel, Awful Knoffel, Radar Ray Flick, Lefty Runnel. And you know these folks. I'm not making these up. Some of these folks are still alive. Size. Are we making fun of them? <sighs> Fatty Atkins just passed away. Skinny Foley. Stretch Longfellow, Slim Hitler, Shorty Powers, Baba Maloney, Baba Doyle, Jumpin' Joe Kelly, Gitch Combo, Peppy Stakina, Wiener Burns, Tiny Holmes, Pee Wee Nevin, Doug Dara, Bronco, he's got hope, Honko Nozovich, Bronco Manovich, yes. And this is where I get into trouble. But these are real. John A. Carrington. Shane Farron, Walk Brazani, I went to Walk. Mark Cody, Frenchie Misha, Kai Kaiulis, Yanni Wong, Nick McGrath, Blackie Usley, Darkie McGrath, Whitey Magani, Red Riley, Pinky Patrick, Jinx Kian Hoon. They're all real. No, no more. Yeah. So now you kind of get the idea. Is it just Butte Pride? Is what we've learned as kids and we carry on as we get older? Or is it just a friendly community of nosy folks who enjoy life and like to share our hospitality? Beaut people make beauty, but it's always been. So there's an old Irish proverb I'm going to close with that kind of really says it all for me. There are good ships 
They're wood chips. And there are ships that sail the sea. But the best ships are friendships. May they always be. So, enjoy making your next new connection. <laughs> I thought I was going to drag it on, but I got time. So, I won't be able to answer them, but I can. <laughs> questions or comments? Either. Yeah, questions or comments. Anything? Am I right or am I wrong? I, I should say that first. Am I right? Do you think it's going to last? Beautiful lasts forever. No, the world will be gone. People will still be here. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I've wondered that a lot. We've got a lot of people that come in. You know, Bozeman, Missoula, Billings sent a lot of people here by bus to get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> they don't fit in here very well, and sleeping outside in Butte in the winter is really tough. <laughs> so a lot of those drift off. But we've got a lot that come here that don't fit into this mode, that weren't trained as Butte people. So those that stay like that may change the transition as to what this interaction would, would continue or not. But if there were enough few folks that raised their kids to do that, it will stay. And from what I've seen of the way families are being raised, this is still a goal. <laughs> David? I've asked a lot of historians here, but you're the definitive one. The flat or the flats? Singular or plural? Both. Yes. Kind of like the Mac and the Mac. <laughs> flat or the flats, it can move either way. Yeah. That's a good way to start an argument. That's like <laughs> the, the, the only other way to start an argument in view. Another good way is ketchup or gravy. Neither. Cold. 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 Gravy. Oh. oh see. Take a path, you don't ruin it with all that other stuff. <laughs> Which kind of ties in with, with the last question. So it's interesting to me you know, listening to the presentation because I'm not originally from you, fifth generation Montana, but my family settled in the Bitterroot. And maybe it's a Marcus Daly thing or something, but yeah. you know, I would say growing and I grew up in Missoula, um, went to college in Bozeman, and you was a town I just passed by, right? Going yeah, yeah, everybody places. always passed by, they didn't want to stay here. Right? Um, but I, I decided the old Northwestern Energy buildings were a good investment for some reason, and so I've been here for three years now working on that. How do you like it? You know, I, I, I love you, I love the you people, and it's it's a very, very challenging project, yeah. but I, I wouldn't try and do it any place but you. Very good. Very good. So, so here's a, as an outsider, do you see this group connection here? Definitely, and, and for me, it was interesting, as you were talking, I thought, you know, I was a little bit defensive one, because I was going to say, well, it's a Montana connection. Yeah. Because, because I experienced it in other places in Montana, but I would say you still has it. Yeah. Where Missoula doesn't, Bo no. Bozeman definitely doesn't. No. No. Hamilton, the Bitterroot is still no. kind of trying to hang on. No, the only, the only one that would be close would be Anaconda. Anaconda do a really similar. Yeah. And they, they've got an Anaconda connection, too. Yeah. But I, I think it's because growing up, a lot of Anaconda folks worked in Butte, and a lot of Butte folks worked in Anaconda. Yeah. And there was a lot of intermarriage between Butte and Anaconda. And that diversity between the both <laughs> made, made it work well. There's a pair right there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just say, if you grow up in Missoula, I, we called it Anaconda Bible. Anaconda. 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 They're pretty proud of that, too. Those are fighting words in Anaconda. <laughs> so I'd like to share my experience. I'm a seventh generation Montana. I wasn't born here. I was conceived in Montana, you but think? dad took, no, I know, mom told me, they bought a new mattress. <laughs> they bought a mattress and then they moved, they moved to Idaho for dad's, for dad's first time. Yeah. So, I, I, their idea was here. I've lived all over the country, but when I, I came to Butte, and my grandmother was born in Butte, um, my aunts were born in Butte. My mom was born in Anaconda. So we have really deep, deep, deep roots here. And when I came here, it was really comforting to see things on, like, in restaurants that people where I grew up with in Tennessee were like, why would you eat that? Um, I grew up eating pasties. Ooh, Who good. makes the best pasties? 
Your mom? Mom always mom makes the always best. That's true. Mom, oh, my mom made the best pasties. I grew up taking like with leftover, yeah, leftover roast beef. You mix it up with the gravy and put it over bread. Mm -hmm. People, I saw that on the menu here, or over mashed potatoes or something like that. Yeah, I've actually. Yeah, McQueen didn't call that goulash. Uh, beef oh, tips, oh, well, like beef tips and gravy over whatever. <laughs> but there were foods that I I grew up eating that were familiar. Oh. Um, I didn't realize until fairly recently that I refer to my family as folks. Oh, you're folks, you're folks, you're folks. Other people don't do that. I think that's a Montana thing, and I know I, I got it from my parents. My yeah. dad always says folks. We and say folks, this and that. Yeah, we say folks. We, we mention folks. Who are your folks? Who are your folks? In the South, they say, who are your kin? Here you say, who are your folks? We don't do kin Yeah, here. no. <laughs> kin and beauty is West Virginia. Come in. <laughs> Most kids, yeah. Um, yeah, there's problems. But there were a lot of things. Even, even looking at this, I realized, oh, that's why I say that. I say, you know. I've always said, you know. You know, yeah, you know, you know is really. My not, daughter, not my daughter. Oh, you need to be a bit. You folks say, you know, yeah. all the time. But a because lot, you're supposed to know. Yeah. You know? A lot of the stuff that you say is also kind of a small town thing because I have very similar. A specific kind of small town. I have very similar connections to my other hometown of Oak Ridge, Tennessee. We can go anywhere in the world and go, hey, walking down Broadway in New York and go, hey, Oak Ridge. We're on the top of the mountain up here in the Bitterroots, and the son of two of my classmates came up there um, in Oak Ridge. So, but also, I could be anywhere and be like, oh, that guy's wearing a, a Montana sweatshirt. Or that guy's wearing a tech shirt. He must be from Butte. So it's a certain kind yeah, some of. Some people wore a Butte shirt around somewhere. Yeah. A Butte person yeah. go right through it. Yeah. And Oak Ridge is Does very similar. Do you see a But what I'm saying is that there's a certain type of small town that Oak Ridge was very much like that. It was a company town. Oak Ridge was built during World War II to build bombs. Butte was built to mine copper. We, we made bullets. You made bullets. <laughs> but but there, there's that, that certain mentality that people were brought into this town for certain reasons, whether it was Oak Ridge in 1942 or Butte in 1895. There, there's that similar thing that causes connections, and they take that with them outside. You know, I just, I, just to go back to the flat and flats, I, I'm just so curious because every time I hear the flats, I cringe because we only grew up saying out on the flat. On the flat. And my dad owned an ice cream store out there, so it was always, are we going out on the flat? We're going out to the flat store. I never heard flats until recently. So I'm just curious, did other people born here? Uh, you know, I'm almost 80, so it would be, you know, maybe it's... The, pe the people who lived on the flat call it the flat. The people who lived on the hill no, call I it the flat. On, no, I lived on the hill. I was born on Bullshine. You know, I, I, I don't know, but did anybody grow up calling itself flats? The flats. Yeah, who grew up hearing just the flat? That's all I got. I would have a flat. I think it goes either way. Yeah, okay. You pretty much know what it is. Yeah. Yes or no, yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, the first time I moved to Butte was in 1991. And I hadn't been here long and I was talking with Floyd Bosser. And he oh, yeah. Floyd, bless his soul. Um, and he said, Do you like Butte? And I said, Yeah, real. I moved here from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Oh. <laughs> Moved up for the weather. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he said, why do you think you like it, Butte? And I said, what? I'm not sure why I like it. I just like it. And he said, it, because it's a classless society. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, well, that's, that's part of it. I think that's what I was trying to get. You know, you know, another, another thing is kind of funny, you know. Yeah. I, I always made fun of folks that I knew like from a, down south or back east. I'll say y'all. Y'all yeah. going. Yeah. Then they make fun of me. Like, well, where are you guys at? <laughs> used guys? What, what's a used guy? I said, kind of like y'all, only a little bit more personal. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jim. I was going to tell you, kind of a good story. I like the story. Here's the best one. I live in the family house. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, 
He's from Paraflat. Well, kind of. Kind of. On the edge of Paraflat. Yeah. On the end of Paraflat, down off this second street. Our neighbor, Hood, was a lot of Croatians, including my friend. And they lived in this house where I live, where 